understanding of what the word was saying. But you know, there's so many ways that people try to describe the law mm -hmm. and to describe grace. Well, and you know, I don't think we can stop talking about it, just giving a little message here and there, you know, so that people can understand. Uh, today, I was not going to bring this again, but the Lord would not let me get away with it. Amen. And he began to put more into my heart concerning the law. Mm. Because, see, a lot of people has a, have a lot of misunderstanding mm -hmm. and a lot of misconceptions about what the word is saying. Yeah. You know, and, and the thought I'm trying to get across to you is the fact that even though people say we, we're not under the law, we are still yes. under the law. Yes. Yes, and there's a many, many things that the, that the children of Israel and that Moses spoke about is considered law. You're right. Now we're not talking about the ceremonial laws. Uh -huh. Because Jesus already done that. Right. Once Amen. and for all. Amen. There ain't no more the lambs to be slain and blood to be put up on the altar and all of this kind of stuff. Those are the ceremonial laws. Yeah. Those were done away with, amen, after Jesus came. Right. Amen. But God's law is God's law. Amen. It's God's will for our lives. So how can you say uh, that God's will for our lives has been done away with? He has not changed his will for you, for mankind. God's laws is God's will. God's laws is God's ways. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? That's true. Amen. Right. And we need to understand that. And stop running around here talking about Amen. That we're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. Which all of that's true. But you got to understand this deeper than where you're going. You can't just say we're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. Because there's more to it than that. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's true. And, and I'm going to break this apart so you can understand. So the next person that comes to you and tell you, you don't have to keep the Ten Commandments. Now I'm talking about the Ten Commandments. And I ain't talking about the ceremonial laws, all those laws that Moses did. Amen. I'm talking about the Ten Commandments. How many know the Ten Commandments went from the Old Testament into the New? Amen. 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 Yes. Hmm? Did it not? Yes. Amen. So how can you say, if you're looking at the Word of God, <clears throat> that it was done away with after Jesus came? It was not. And I want to shed a little more light on this subject. Because I'm not telling you uh, uh, that, that, that with your, your, your mind that you keep the laws of God. I'm talking about with your heart. And see, my daughter spoke a little bit on that tonight. And I said, thank God, you know, she, she got a little bit of that when she talked about it's, it's her will. She has willed herself to, to do God's will. Amen. Amen. See, it's not grievous for her to turn down something that the devil would have her to do. Amen. Because she wants to be pleasing in the eyesight of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So we need to understand that these same laws that govern our lives is still in existence. Thank you, Lord. Are you, are you following where I'm going? Amen. Amen. Say amen again. Amen. 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 So my topic tonight is Old Testament law becomes New Testament law. Mm. Old Testament law becomes New Testament law. Amen. In other words, the law that was in the old covenant is the same law, but it's under the new covenant. All right. Yeah. Amen. 
follow what I'm saying? Amen. 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 And so, therefore, I, you know, people are going around talking about, oh, you know, it's because, because of grace. It, this is true, but you need to understand what you're talking about. Amen. How many know that God would not be pleased if, if he heard us saying that his laws have been done away with? <laughs> who made us? Amen. And who made law? Who made law? Who had the will? Who had the will for mankind? It was God. So how can anybody do away with what God created? God created law to govern a people. He wanted to make you love him. He wanted to give you guidelines as to how to love him. And how to live your life that would be pleasing in his eyesight. Amen. Amen. Because man, it took one man, amen, that fell into sin to bring sin upon the whole world, mankind. Amen. When Adam fell, he brought sin upon the whole world. Mm -hmm. And it took one man. With the shedding of blood. Yeah. To redeem us back to the Father. Yes, yeah. But that one man had to be perfect in all his ways. Yes, yeah. In order to pay the sin debt. Yes. Right. At that song, he paid the debt. He paid a, 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 a debt that, 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 that we owe. That he did not owe. Huh? Why? Because he loved us. Amen. So God had a plan. And this plan was to show the children of Israel in the old covenant how to walk right before him. Mm -hmm. And that's why he instituted the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. And I like to say the Dashanites. And, but it didn't stop there. Because even before Jesus came, the children of Israel could not live up to the law. Mm -hmm. They were having a hard time being obedient to the will of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's why God instituted the sacrifices to cover over their sins because he cannot look upon sin. He is too holy. He does not look at sin. So he instituted the priests to go into the holies of holies once a year and to kill a lamb and, and to spread the blood across the mercy seat to shed mercy upon the people for their sins. Amen. Amen. But that still did not pay the sin debt. Because the sin debt could not be paid with, 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 with animal blood. That's right. mm -hmm. It had to be paid with spotless blood. Amen. So that he created himself a body. Mm -hmm. Made in the likeness of sinful flesh. How many know he looked like us? And he came down and he came, came into the world, amen, with sinful flesh. Because that sinful flesh was going to have to die on Calvary's cross. Amen. amen. To pay the sin debt that man owed to God. Amen. In order to buy us back. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Amen. I said, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? He had to buy us back. See, Satan had us. Glory be to God. Satan had us in the grips of sin. And we had no way out. Because all the blood could do was cover it. Huh? So God said, I'm going to send my son down there 
in like, like sinful flesh to die for my children. And then all of those that look to him will I save. Will I save. You see, people don't realize, people don't realize that, 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 that those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, amen, they're still under the penalty of sin. The only way you get out from under this penalty of sin is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior who paid the sin debt for you. And accept his blood atoning in your life. And then as we talked last week, as Paul says, now that we have the grace of Jesus, we have grace. Does sin still abound? Do we still sin that grace may abound? God forbid. God forbid. See, a lot of people think, and, and, and this is true, a lot of them say they, they got saved a long time ago. And they got baptized. And they think they are still up under that grace when they've been doing some of everything ever since they went down in the water. And they think they're still up underneath this grace. Because they're thinking to themselves that because Jesus died for our sins, well said. I'm still okay. Not if you're in sin. I said not if you're in sin. Because Jesus, because God will not look upon sin. And if you ain't got the blood covering, somebody say amen. amen. Over that sin, hallelujah, then you're not under grace. Amen. Gotta make it plain. Gotta make it plain. See, 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 church, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you are to live unto Him. Hallelujah. Huh? As He lives unto the Father, then you live unto Him. Amen. Huh? Amen. Am I not right? Amen. Did Jesus not follow in God's footsteps? Did Jesus not come to do the Father's will? Yes, He did. Yes. Then as Jesus follows in God's footsteps, and Jesus came to do the will of the Father, then so should we follow in the footsteps of Jesus. As he leads me, then I will follow. As he leads me, I will follow. Yes, amen. amen. Hallelujah. That's why sometimes when I get excited over here, I say, can you, you guys see God doing some of these things people are doing? Can you see Jesus doing some of these things that people are doing and still saying they say? Can you see it? Hmm? You need to learn to ask yourself, what would Jesus do? In this situation, what would Jesus do? Before you go out and do, what would Jesus do? Would Jesus be pleased with me what I do? Hmm? So we're talking about Old Testament law, mm -hmm. and we're talking about New Testament law. You see, of the Old Testament law was the letter of the law. In other words, they were supposed to obey it to the letter. Mm -hmm. And it brought about uh, bondage, and, and, and it brought about, not bondage in that sense, but to the point where uh, they had no way out of being able to be saved. It also brought about condemnation because, listen, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Yes. But before that, there was condemnation. Because the law was designed to bring you into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. The law was made to bring forth God's will in your life. And then you see, New Testament law changed after Jesus came. In other words, the New Testament, the, the, the covenant, I mean, the Ten Commandments did not change. But the spirit of 
the law came. See, in the Old Testament was the letter of the law. Amen. With no spirit, but. But when Jesus came, ah. then the spirit of the law Amen. came. So then Jesus began to teach. He did not teach a new doctrine. He did, he did, he, he taught, still taught the same. But he showed the spirit of the law instead of the letter of the law. In other words, this is what the, the, the law really means. See, 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 see. The letter of the law could not bring you salvation. And that it was not perfect. But him that is perfect could bring about the spirit of the law or the spirit of God's will. I said the spirit of God's will. So that now we worship him in the spirit. We don't worship him by the letter of the law anymore. We worship him in the spirit. Go to Matthew 22. Yeah. Matthew 22. Look at verse 37. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Matthew 22 and verse 37 says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hangs all the law and the prophets. Is that not the Ten Commandments? Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Yep. On these two laws hangs all the law. <laughs> Because the first few, as I told you last week, talks about your love for Jesus, for God. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, thy soul. And the second, the next few, fall underneath the second commandment, great commandment that Jesus gave. And that is to love thy neighbor as thyself. How many... Know the Ten Commandments. Amen. Amen. I call them the Thou Shanaths. Amen. When you start talking about what you should not do to your neighbor, if you love your neighbor, thou shalt not do this, and thou shalt not do that. Huh? Amen. Because that is the will of God for you. So are you telling me that God has, 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 has done away with this? How many know he still has a will for your life? Amen. Jesus came and Jesus died for you to cover your sins. Thank you, Jesus. So that the Father will never see them again. Am I not right? Amen. But he has told you that if you sin, if you fall short, then Jesus is standing there in front of the Father and he's saying, look at me, God. Look at me. I am your son. I am the one that paid the price for their sins. So we can come boldly to the throne of grace and ask for forgiveness for our sins when we fall. Whereas before, in the Old Testament, you didn't have no way to go before. You could not go before the throne of grace. You could not go before the mercy seat. Only the priest, once a year, to atone for your sins. Not to cover your sins. See, Jesus covers your sins so that the Father don't sin. 
they don't have a chance to get to the Father because Jesus is standing there. As an intercession. Intercessor between you and the Father. Amen. So then when we look at New Testament law, I want to continue on to show you what Jesus said. Jesus brought the spirit of the law. He didn't change. He said, I came not to change the law, but to fulfill it. I didn't come to change it. I didn't come to do away with it. I came to fulfill it. Amen. So that once and for all, it has been fulfilled to the Father's satisfaction. When he fulfilled it, he said, it is finished. Yes, amen. It is finished. Because it was done. Am I not right about it? Amen. amen. He satisfied the sin debt because we could not. that you find in the New Testament, they all go back to the two commandments Amen. that he gave. And the two commandments that he gave go all the way back to the Old Testament, to the Ten Commandments. Amen. Mm -hmm. Look at that, church. Look at that. This is what he said. The first commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and thy mind. And the second is like unto it to what? Love thy neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, bringing the spirit of the law, he brought it in with L O V E. Yes, amen. I said L O V E. Yes, amen. How many know that God is love? Amen. Yes. How many know that Jesus is love? Yes. How many know that that's his commandment? Yes. That we love one another. Yes. And if you love one another, you'll keep my commandments. Ain't that what Jesus said? Yes. So what commandments is he talking about? He's talking about the Ten Commandments. Because if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, you're not going to sin against him. Oh. And if you love your neighbor as yourself, you're not going to sin against your neighbor. Yes, amen. Because you don't want to sin against yourself. He said, love thy neighbor as thyself. Is that not right? Amen. Huh? Is that not right? Amen. Amen. And this is what we're, we're talking about tonight. The, 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 the uh, commandment of, of the law, amen, that we'll understand the New Testament law, amen, and it is the spirit of the law amen. that we are keeping now. I said we're keeping the spirit of the law. Amen. Not the letter of the law. We ain't got nobody coming around beating us over the top of the head and saying, you better do this and you better do that. No, but if you love the Lord, you're going to keep his commandments. Yes. Huh? If you love the Lord with all your heart and your mind and soul, you're not going to sin against God. Amen. You know, the, the Bible talked about he wrote the Ten Commandments up on the tables of your heart so you'll know not to sin against him. That's his will. He wrote his will for you. He took them off the tablets of stone. Yes, he did. That was placed in the Ark of the Covenant. And he put them in your heart. Amen. So that you will know not to sin against him. Nobody has to tell you that this is a thou shall not, because you already know. Yes, 
Am I not right about it? Right. So how can, how, if he wrote them in the, on the tables of your heart, why would people say that the Ten Commandments is done away with? They're wrote there and they're going to be there until you die. Yes, amen. So you'll know, know what? Know not to sin against God. You will know his will for your life. Somebody say amen. 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 Praise him. And see, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, and the Spirit of God comes in us, amen, he will convict us of our error of our ways. Amen. Yes. Yes. How many know yes. that's right? Yes. yes. Amen. Huh? Amen. And why? Because he letting us know you're going against God's will. Amen. God's commands. Amen. Amen. So then we know that this is true. Amen. Amen. Love is the fulfillment of the law. Go to Romans 13. Romans 13, look at verse, verse 8. Amen. This is Paul talking. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Woo I said, woo -hoo. <laughs> Is that not in the new covenant? Uh -huh. Yes. Was not Paul saved under the new covenant? Amen. Was not Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ? Amen. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So every time that you love somebody and you continue loving your neighbor, you are fulfilling God's law. Amen. And that is his will for you, is for you to fulfill the law. To walk in his laws, to walk in his statutes, to walk in his judgments. Amen. Verse 9. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Is this not the Ten Commandments? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Thou shalt not kill. Is that not the Ten Commandments? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. <laughs> so somebody answer me, are we to fulfill the law? Amen. Are we to walk in the law? Amen. 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 But we do it in what? L-O-V-E. We do it by love. That is the spirit of what we're doing. I've heard many people say when they come over here, they feel love over here. Praise God. Because we don't want to show no, no, no condemnation to nobody. We're not, we're not in the business of that. We're in the business of loving. Amen. And teaching what is the will of God. Amen. We want to show forth love to, to those that come here. There may be some that come here and they may not be where you are in the Lord. Do you show them ill will or do you show them love? And you love them. If they stay, they stay. If they don't stay, it's on them, not on you. Amen. Amen. Your neighbors as yourself. You love yourself, then you love your neighbors as yourself. And this is the will of God. And it comes, the spirit of the law is L-O-V-E. Love. Amen. 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 All throughout the book, the New Testament, where Jesus was talking, you'll see where Jesus was talking about the Ten Commandments in love. In love. He never beat nobody over the head. Amen. But he explained to them that we walk in the Spirit of God through L-O-V-E which is love. Amen. And if you 
love your neighbor, you won't sin against your neighbor. If you have Jesus' love, if you have God's love down on the inside of you, side of you, you will not show ill will to God, to Jesus, or to your neighbor. Hmm? There's many things that's out there that the devil tries to get us involved in. Amen? And get us to show ill will. If you know that this is against God, then if you love God, you don't want to, you won't do it. Yeah. You want to be changed. You want to be delivered. You want to be set free from the things that have you in bondage. Yeah. Am I not right about it? Yeah. Yeah. Look at St. John. St. John 3. Go back to St. John 3. I'm not going to be much longer. But I'm just trying to give you a little bit more of this concerning the law. St. John 3.16. Everybody ought to know that one. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever. Somebody said whosoever. Whosoever. Believeth in him should not what? Perish. But what? Have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to what? Condemn. Condemn. But that the world through him might be saved. Amen. He did not come to condemn you. But he came to fulfill the law. And he came to show you how to walk in the righteousness of God. Yes, and how to live a right life and be in the right standing with God. Amen. And he's saying, I know before that God's will and God's laws was hard for you to bear. And I know that you, even though they were not grievous, you was having a hard time with them. And they could not save. But I want to show you how. I want to show you how you can be pleasing in the eyesight of God and still be saved. Amen. All you got to do is show love for your father, mm -hmm. which is in heaven, and love to your neighbor. Amen. And if you do these two things, mm. you will receive eternal life. Because love is the catalyst. Love is what gets you over the top. Mm, thank you, Jesus. It's the love, church. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes, sometimes some people are very unlovely. <laughs> I know sometimes they can be unloving. <laughs> but he showed us how to do that. He has shown us how to walk away from the situation whereas we do not sin against God. Amen. Amen. Am I not right about it? Amen. 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 You have a will. And that will he gave you to love God, to walk with God, to live right for God, or to turn and go the other way. It is your will. It is your will. Amen. Jesus has made a way for you to be able to live under the righteousness of God. And it's up to you. But church, those ways that he showed you is still the Ten Commandments. Are they not? Amen. Amen. I said, are they not? Amen. Amen. So don't let nobody tell you that you don't have to keep the Ten Commandments. Because you do. Because the very time that you step out of line with that and you begin to do things against your neighbor or do things against God, you are in S-I-N. Yes. Amen. Amen. Ain't no if, ands, buts about it. That's why the Bible tells us that if a man say, man say that he has not sinned, he's a liar. Amen. Because we all sin yes. and fall short of the glory of God every day. Yes. We not, may not do these great big old sins, those sins that people can see or whatever, but we sometimes we sin in our heart. And he sees it. And the Holy Spirit will let you know, now you know that ain't right thinking. 
So then it is up to you to ask for forgiveness and turn from that thing and not continue in that way. Somebody say amen. Amen. You see, it's a striving way. Yes. What Jesus did, he did, he paid your sin debt. So that you don't have to pay that debt. Thank you, Jesus. But if you come out from under his grace, then you're going to have to pay that debt. Yes, amen. And I know that this message go out, it might rub some folk the wrong way. But you might as well get it in your, in your heart because it's in the word of God. Yes, it is. That we do abide under the will of God. And the Ten Commandments, is the will of God. Yes, Somebody amen. say amen. 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 I got another scripture for you. St. John, oh, I just read that. So go back to go back to Matthew. Matthew 22, I want to read it again. What Jesus said. Matthew 22 and verse 37. And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And on these two commandments hangs all the law and the prophets. Amen. And I'm gonna tell you something, that the Old Testament laws went all the way up through All of those in the Old Testament, all the way up through the prophets. And I believe they stopped at John the Baptist. But Jesus fulfilled them when he came so that you don't have to. And when I say fulfill, I'm talking about he lived up to it so that you would be able to be saved. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Amen. Amen. And a lot of people have it backwards. They think that just because he fulfilled it, we don't have to fulfill it. But you got to walk in the newness of life. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And you got to walk after the love that he told you to walk after. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you shall receive everlasting life. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah.